with the knee flex 90 degrees, create standard ACLR viewing and working portals. Perform a medial fat pad resection to achieve adequate visibility of the notch via arthrotomy later in the procedure. Assess the tibial ACL stump for adequate length and quality to ensure it can hold a non-strangulating suture. The femoral fixation button should be prepared with cinch and toggle sutures. The cinch sutures consist of one number two dark green and one number two light green non-absorbable braided suture placed through the center holes of the button. The toggle sutures consist of one number two light green and one number two white non-absorbable braided suture placed through each end hole of the button. These sutures will hold the implant and provide additional stability to the knee. Perform a kidney bean-shaped notchplasty, preserving the femoral footprint. Take at least 3 mm anteriorly and 1 mm posteriorly and inferiorly. The femoral tunnel should be prepared by drilling the appropriate guide pin at the central anterior edge of the femoral ACL footprint. Create a lateral skin incision, distal to the pin and down to the bone. Follow this guide pin with the corresponding fixation button drill and reamer. Place a passing suture through the femoral tunnel. The tibial tunnel is drilled by placing a tibial aimer so that the guide pin exits 2 to 3 millimeters into the central anterior edge of the tibial footprint and between the tibial spines. Follow this guide pin with the corresponding fixation button drill and reamer. Place a passing suture through the tibial tunnel. Place a non-strangulating stitch in the tibial ACL stump using a 54-inch number 2 absorbable violet suture so that the free ends exit the stump proximally. Retrieve the femoral fixation button with sutures from the antibiotic solution. Insert the stump sutures through the central holes of the button, passing counter to the cinch sutures. Reserve a 5 to 6 inch loop of stump suture through the medial portal and hold it in place with a towel clamp to enable control over the stump for the remainder of the procedure. Pass the button through the femoral tunnel and flip on the lateral cortex, ensuring it is flush to the bone. Perform a 2-inch arthrotomy at the medial border of the patellar tendon. Irrigate the joint with 500 milliliters of antibiotic irrigation solution and dry the joint space thoroughly. After this point in the procedure, do not irrigate the joint again. Additionally, a new dry pair of gloves should be used to handle the bare implant. Using a 2.5-inch straight Keith needle, Thread one limb of the cinch suture through each quadrant of the bare implant. Sutures should be passed through the more porous end of the implant first. Pass the cinch sutures through the tibial tunnel. Load a fixation button onto the cinch sutures exiting the tibial tunnel and secure these sutures with a clamp. Slowly apply blood to the top proximal end of the bare implant, allowing the blood to fully penetrate. Then carefully drag the syringe down and around each side of the implant. Leave a small distal segment less saturated and slightly firm to help facilitate passing and positioning of the implant into the notch. Pull tension on the cinch sutures exiting the distal end of the implant and slide the implant along the taut sutures into the notch. If needed, add a small amount of remaining blood to the distal end of the implant so that it is fully saturated. While holding the bare implant in the notch with a thumb, pull the cinch sutures exiting the tibial tunnel and bring the knee into full extension. Place the leg on the table to keep the knee in full extension for the remainder of the procedure. Pull the stump sutures exiting the lateral femoral tunnel 
dunking the tibial stump into the notch and blood-soaked bare implant. Pull max tension on the cinch sutures and tie them down to the tibial button. Remove the toggle sutures and close the capsule. Wrap the knee in full extension with the post-operative brace locked at zero degrees.